Hey everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guest is Jessica Beagle. She's senior VP and chief innovation officer at LifePoint Health. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Yeah, excited for this discussion. We're here at the health conference. Yeah. A lot of exciting things happening. Before we just dive into our topic today, tell us a little bit about yourself and LifePoint Health. Sure, um, so I'm the senior vice president and chief innovation officer, first chief innovation officer in LifePoint's history. Joined about two years ago. Uh, I'm a lawyer by background. I like to say I'm a recovering Esquire. <laughs> Got my start in healthcare at GE um, and then found my way into tech. So in 2013, I founded these um, healthcare and life science business at AWS, so the cloud part of Amazon. Wow. Um, helped build that business up, uh, which was really fun. Then joined DeepMind, which is an artificial intelligence uh, group owned by Google was on the reboot of Google Health, and uh, then went to Walgreens to help incubate and grow uh, Walgreens Health before coming to LifePoint. So um, I give you that sense of my background because I have a very different perspective when it comes to a care delivery system, which is thinking about how do you aggregate data, how do you think about a patient as a consumer, and how do you bring all of these different worlds together, uh, and really think about the future of healthcare. So for LifePoint, we uh, spun out of HCA almost, I think, 25 years ago? Wow. Um, so a while ago, and by a background, we originally were a lot of rural health systems or hospitals, and we've grown through acquisition. We've continued to expand and diversify. So today, we cover 30 states. We have 62 hospitals and over 50 rehab and behavioral facilities, and wow. we're continuing to grow, which is really exciting. So the ability for me to bring modern technology and deliver it at scale to rural America and to uh, sort of across the the country versus really big cities is something that's really exciting for me so I'm happy to be here yeah no life might have such a spread I, I think you know you, you kind of mentioned this but talk to us about what are the challenges faced for a healthcare delivery network like yeah. LifePoint you know, that you know that has many legacy technologies that yeah. has data and disparate systems I mean mm -hmm. 25 years ago you know, like <laughs> every health system is, is yeah. older right yeah. and so you have these legacy systems talk to us about what is the reality of care delivery delivery when it comes to these technologies yeah and this has been one of the interesting shifts that I've seen coming from kind of the ivory tower of tech which was we're just des we're designing for like what's the next best standard what's like the next greatest technology which I'm the biggest fan of new technology there is yeah. um, but when you think about the the reality of healthcare, which is what I like to call it, there are systems out there that are very old and do not comply with a lot of these um, regulations and these new standards. And so when we think from a technology perspective, how can we empower those companies that have invested in these legacy technologies and bring them up to modern day? That's something that's like, a, it's a big challenge. And I think that it's one that a lot of folks like kind of forget about. And so for me and the team at LifePoint, is a wonderful team, uh, our um, chief information officer and his entire IT team been wonderful to work with and to learn from. But when we think about bringing data together, it's a real challenge. And so we had to really go out and find partners and bring them together to actually create a solution. There wasn't a one-stop shop, which would been which would have been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> a lot easier. Your EHR doesn't solve all that? What no, <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, we have many EHRs, some I've never heard of. Uh, and so it's just one of those things, again, back to the reality of healthcare. And I think for for, you know the listeners and your readers thinking about everyone's not on fire everyone doesn't have HL7 fees everyone's not on epic or Cerner there are a lot of other systems out there and so when we're designing new technology like we need to think about how do we bring other folks along because at the end of the day you're missing a large swath of the potential customer base that you could have when you kind of just forget about them so I think it's a bit of a balance so how are you approaching mixing these legacy technologies yeah. with new technologies that, of course, we all want to embrace? What's been your your approach to addressing this problem? Yeah, so when I first joined, um, you know, my job is to bring in modern technology and new innovations. and. We can do that, but we need to have modern endpoints to connect into. Mm -hmm. And so, working closely with our IT team, uh, you know, we really identified that we needed to like identify a cloud strategy. So we went through all the cloud vendors and we partnered with Google Cloud, which we we're very happy with. 
And you know, while we were going through that analysis, we said, oh, there's actually some other pieces when we think about uh, the holistic nature of our tech stack where we needed partners. Um, so we brought in a wonderful uh, group, Clinical Architecture, that really came in and helped us normalize and organize our data so we could get it into the cloud. So there was great data quality, uh, we could trust the information that we were looking at, and it was normalized all in the same like language so we could actually do something with it because as you well know, if it's digitized, that's great, but if there's no quality and it's not in the same language, it's really not useful. And so those are some of the key principles that we looked at was how do we have best-in-class security, best-in-class quality, and at the end of the day, make the data useful for our operators on the field. Like that, at the end of the day, is what we're really trying to do is like empower our teams at the bedside with data so they can better treat our patients. Yeah. So, I mean, standards and quality are always a challenge when mm -hmm. aggregating data. Everyone faces that. So how did you approach you know, ensuring the quality data? You know, what, what, what did you do with clinical architecture to make sure that the data was high quality? Yeah, so I think um, what's really important, especially when you're thinking about a system the size of LifePoint and the information that we're dealing with, is finding people that have real on the ground experience in healthcare, and so the clinical architecture brings many, many decades. Like they might get mad at me for saying that. Um, they're <laughs> veterans <laughs> of uh, you know real world uh, experience, like working with healthcare data. And so that one was really key for us. It's not folks that just created a new company and have a bunch of funding, but have real on the ground experience. So I think you know when I was at Amazon, uh, Andy Jassy used to say, "There's no compression algorithm for experience." I think that that really speaks volumes here. Um, so having that on the ground experience working really closely with our IT team and our compliance team to ensure that any of the data that we were bringing together met those standards that we at LifePoint had already identified. Uh, and so we worked with two of their products, um, Pivot and Symmetical, um, to uh, accomplish those goals. And so the teams have been really happy with the results. It was a great working relationship. I think we went from first meeting to full deployment in less than seven months, which is pretty fast, again, healthcare speed's not fast, uh, enterprise healthcare is like even like less fast, um, but that was pretty fast for us and the teams have been really happy. So we've deployed the solution connecting across 60 of our hospitals, which has been great. That's interesting. And you're right, when it comes to legacy technologies, mm -hmm. experience and age is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> because they know the older systems and how it's to It's like get fine them wine. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> So what kind of problems are you looking to solve by aggregating all this data? Yeah. I mean, it's great that you're, you know, you're mm -hmm. working, you're ensuring the quality with, yeah. you know, with the solution, but what, do you, what problems do you want to solve with this and how do you make that data actionable? Because, I mean, we all remember the enterprise data warehouse days. Let's shove it all in and somehow we'll get yeah. a magical yeah, result. Yeah, yeah. Like, that doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's actually really funny. You're bringing me back to my early AWS days. So this is before people knew really what cloud computing was. And so I would go talk to a bunch of enterprise, like CIOs, CTOs, and I would convince them. And they said, okay, great. We understand. We digitized everything. Now we have a problem we want to solve. And what do we do now? And it was one of those where it was an aha moment of like, you can't just digitize for digitization sake. You need to digitize and then empower the people on the ground that are trying to solve very specific um, problems. And so for us, the first step, obviously, when you're building a house, you want a really strong foundation. So that was our first goal is like, let's do that right, uh, assemble the right partners, uh, ensure that everything is strong from the get-go. And then from there, we're starting to unleash the teams um, to take that data and you know empower them as they're serving patients so a couple different ways that we're using this data um, we are helping patients like more easily schedule with their physicians we're helping physicians on the ground understand more information about their patient that may be outside of the EHR for example and uh, continuously updating all of the information that we have about patients and at the end of the day we really want to be that place where you feel like anything else that you experience in your consumer life we know something about you that's going to help further your care not mm. just knowing things about you to know things about you, but for an actual purpose to better treat you and get you back on the road to recovery, which is where we all want to be, leading like a healthy life, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I love the patient focus mm -hmm. and all that you're doing there. Yeah. You know, what, what's on the agenda next? Like, you know, <laughs> now you get all the data together, you're the chief innovation officer. Yeah. What innovations are you looking at next? There's a lot of really exciting things going on. So again, like I keep talking about data, but data is so key to empowering our teams to do what it is that they went to school to train to do, right? And so I see this as a real a tool in their tool chest. And um, when we think about, everyone keeps talking about generative AI. 
well, AI is no good if you don't have quality data yeah. to train on. And so uh, one of the things that we're really excited about is how do we start to take new solutions and new technologies like generative AI, bring them into the hospital and remove some of the operational efficient inefficiencies uh, and burdens that we're placing on our team. So that's an area that we're really excited about um, that we're going to be rolling out in a couple of our hospitals. Um, because of the rural nature of some of our hospitals, we also may not have have certain types of specialty care. So we've partnered with a specialty women's health company to okay. bring virtual women's health into our communities where we may not have that type of specialty. So that's really exciting for me as a female, as well as you know, just thinking about the makeup of our communities. Like how can we say wonderful technology, innovators that are thinking differently and solving problems that people have on the ground. Um, so there's just a couple of examples of things that we're doing. I love it. And you're right about generative AI. You know, they talk about hallucinations. Yeah. But I, someone said, no, they're not hallucinations. Someone actually said that yeah. on the public internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the, <laughs> if the data is quality, then there's fewer hallucinations yeah, because yeah. it's not pulling, you know, like yeah. it's not really a hallucination, it's pulling from actual yeah. data. Yeah, right? and one thing that's really interesting, so I worked at Google and when I was on the reboot of Google Health, I actually got to work really closely with the search team. And one of the things that was very interesting was thinking about how do we get better quality information? The Google team does a wonderful job. When you think about the massive amount of information yeah. that's in the world, World, being able to index it the way that they do and the clean interface and try to serve it up. Like the goal of our team was really to say, how do we empower people to get on the next step of their journey with information powering them? So it's the same thing that we're trying to do here at LifePoint, which is how do we take data to empower people to achieve their goals uh, in health? And so, but when you think of this data, yeah, I mean, Google's trying to clean it up. They're, they have a yeah. wonderful team doing it. They have all the money in the world too to do it, but there's still a lot of crap out there and I think that's one of the things that we in the healthcare world are really thinking about when it's healthcare and technology Everyone gets excited about the new shiny penny, but being really smart about um, no, no biases, uh, ensuring quality data, ensuring representation. Like these are all things that uh, you know my peers and I talk about, but I'm still always an optimist, and I do <laughs> think that it's actually going to really impact people in the short term. Um, while folks might say, oh, you know, administrative burden is not that big of a deal. When you look at the newspaper headlines about burnout with our physicians, our yeah nurses, let's be honest, we all want people staffing our hospitals when ourselves or loved ones are sick, and we also want to alleviate that headache for loved ones and friends that may be in those positions, and so it's a really exciting time, I think, to be able to start to introduce that technology, and I'll just say this, when I show the technology to our teams on the ground that are in the hospital, they go, how how is it taking this long? Like, when can I get this? Like, what do you need? I do solution. I need to pay for this? And it's like, no, 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 like, we got it. Um, but I think that to see, for me, it's really great to see people in healthcare excited about technology. And you've been covering technology for a long time, so you can probably talk like, much better about this than I can. I feel like folks are kind of burned out being let down by yeah. technology, all the promises that they were given and where technology's fallen short. And so to see people genuinely excited about what technology can uh, unlock for them and their creativity and whatever it is that they do, whether they be a physician, you know, a hospital CEO, yeah. a nurse, a front desk per staff, yeah. Yeah, a sorry. family <laughs> member who's trying to help care for a loved one or even a patient. Yeah, so. absolutely. And to your point, like if we surface bad quality data, mm -hmm. we actually increase the burnout. Oh yeah. But if we surface the right data, that's mm -hmm. quality data that's you know that's useful to them, it reduces burnout. So it's interesting. Like it is a double-edged sword. Yes, 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 for sure. Well, Jessica, this was enlightening. I love yeah. hearing about your experiences. Yeah. What an interesting background you have. And yeah. thanks for sharing with us. And thanks yeah, everyone thank for you. watching and listening. Thanks. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcast applications. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you.